thing. It's a great honor to be uh, to be here uh, today, um, uh, recognizing some uh, uh, some names, discovering new ones. Um, this is I uh, uh, can't believe it's the fifth score. So uh, congratulations, you're part of a, a great program, uh, and. Um, and today we're um, we're going to talk about how the NFT market uh, work. I mean, this is a, a very broad question and uh, uh, one that I covered uh, last uh, summer. Uh, actually, I went back to uh, the presentation I made uh, to the last court uh, and looking at my slide, I was like, wow, I cannot present that. Everything changed. Um, so it's a it's a brand new um, uh, presentation, but um, I'm telling you that story um, not <laughs> to like, you know tell you that I reuse slides, but um, but uh, quite uh, revealing on uh, on how uh, fast uh, things change and uh, and how um, you know like this space is still uh, very much in. Uh, uh, in construction, and uh, and so this is uh, um, exhausting and exciting at the same time. Uh, so hopefully uh, I can uh, give you uh, a little bit of, uh, of of this excitement and 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 hopefully not so much uh, overwhelming feeling uh, uh, after that. So um, I'm gonna share my screens. I have slides, but um, as on Discord, I don't see you when I share my screen. Like if you have questions like along the way, please. Um, you know, like ask them as we go, because um, then I, I feel more like I don't, um, I'm not speaking uh, to myself. Uh, this is uh, uh, absolutely do not uh, mind the uh, interruption. Um, and uh, yeah, anything before we start? All right. Let's, uh, let's then uh, start. All right, I will share the slides uh, with you after, so you have like all the links and uh, uh, references. Uh, so, uh, so this is available. Don't feel like um, you know you have to <laughs> take notes or anything. I mean, please feel free to take notes as well. Um, okay, like legal disclaimer, we can pass. But um, yeah, this is not investment advice uh, by any means. Uh, but you know that already. And uh, just to um, do the thing that I, I, I need a slide to remember to introduce myself. Uh, so this is uh, the slide. Um, I've been in the crypto art space since uh, 2018 uh, and uh, been advising uh, via a company called Lal Art uh, that um, I founded. I mean, it's not some big uh, company out there. This is literally Lal is a, are the initials of my two children, <laughs> and uh, uh, and in 2018, after uh, working at uh, um, uh, Christie's and, and Artnet, I started um, uh, advising uh, NF very early NFT uh, platforms, um, and uh, they were mostly uh, devs and technical people who were looking for um, uh, people who knew how to speak to artists and understood how the art market uh, worked. Uh, so did that for a few years, and 2021 was really when we uh, started advising um, uh, collectors, because uh, that's kind of when they joined uh, the space. Uh, and, uh, and now we continue doing that, but we also uh, uh, do uh, work with uh, artists uh, and uh, not a gallery or, or representing or not an agent neither, but uh, we do help with uh, strategy, pricing, uh, marketing, positioning uh, via uh, advisory uh, sessions. Uh, so uh, this is uh, me. And so to start, I'd like to go back to that uh, graph that uh, you can find, and if you don't follow like uh, what the reports they release, I, I highly recommend it. Uh, Nonfungible.com uh, publishes uh, a quarterly and then one annual uh, report on uh, NFTs. And uh, I think Tezos is actually uh, excluded still from that report, um, but it gives you some like good uh, good idea uh, on you know in terms of volume, especially like because it uh, includes um, I think Ethereum, Solana, uh, Polygon, and a few other. And and one thing that I want you guys to 
um, you know, keep in mind uh, when you talk about NFTs with uh, your grandma, uh, someone on the street, uh, and they don't understand what you do. They're like, what, you're an artist, you do like green frogs, like, or, you know, like ugly monkeys, like, or cactuses with sunglasses uh, on the blockchain. Uh, and you're like, no, like, I don't do collectibles. Like, why are we always referring uh, to uh, that part of the market? Well, uh, this graph actually shows you why. Is that, like, uh, in terms of volume uh, traded, and it's uh, um, the like, end of the year uh, number, uh, and, you know, shows that collectibles is, like, more than half of all the use cases of NFTs. Um, so this is what is covered in the press and uh, what, uh, you know, like a Lambda person uh, not involved in Web3 uh, will see of the NFT uh, market. And uh, art is still a very small uh, percent uh, of that. So, of course, I mean, I use the volume of USD traded. It will be a different number uh, if, if it's, uh, you know, in ease or if it's not in volume, like not the point of like showing you exact data, uh, just the point of, uh, of pointing how uh, niche uh, like NFT uh, backed uh, art uh, and artworks uh, are. And that uh, percentage is actually not increasing. It's actually currently decreasing. Uh, <laughs> don't panic, <laughs> this is fine. Uh, but it's it's something that is like is gonna take time, right? Like to uh, to increase and uh, uh, and actually like if we look at the number, like I think in 2021 it was actually 16 uh, percent. So it's quite steady, I would say, not decreasing uh, per se. And, and actually, I, I want to show you like uh, not a full history. I mean, you have uh, that class, I think, with Jason on the uh, full history uh, of the crypto art market. But, but just looking at like the half of last year, um, you know, there's, there's a lot happening. And uh, talking about this like steady percentage, like there's, um, you know, steadily, uh, even with all the crypto crashes and the uh, uh, you know layoffs at uh, at OpenSea and um, some like you know like kind of like um, yeah like events that I'm going to mention as well like you know FTX and and everything um, that steadily. Uh, we see more actors uh, getting in. So, um, you know, Philips had a, uh, not very successful, but they had a, a, a generative art sale back in July. Frank Stella launched uh, his first uh, NFT project in September with Arsenal. Um, September MoMA as well announced, they did not acquire an NFT, but they announced uh, that they were going to purchase more digital art. Uh, and, um, you know, like events like that, Christie's uh, launched uh, um, um, a Web3 native platform. Uh, back in November, uh, Art Basel announced uh, that they uh, created or launched a, a new private blockchain for galleries uh, called RQL. And uh, museums also are like starting to acquire uh, more uh, NFT uh, art. So, you know, like slowly the art world is moving in, uh, is uh, taking a more and more interest. Uh, and if we go back in the previous years, like, you know, you've all heard of uh, um, you know, the, the auctions and, and, and so on and so forth. So the, by going back to my, uh, you know, like uh, my little percentage of uh, crypto art legs, uh, it will take time uh, to increase, to get more uh, collectors in. Uh, you know, a lot of people got into NFTs uh, via the profile picture and collectible projects. Um, some of uh, these collectors uh, now, or uh, I would say, have already or are upgrading, <laughs> upgrading to uh, art via the generative art uh, market. Because uh, if you look at like how um, the generative art uh, drops uh, work, there are a lot of similar mechanisms uh, to the uh, profile picture uh, projects. Uh, but generative art introduces uh, artistic concepts like the name of an artist. Uh, the concepts attached to it. And so this will take time, right? Like, and uh, the latest events, um, you know, like are not helping. <laughs> Let's just face it. Um, it has nothing to do with like what you're actually uh, creating, but, uh, you know, covers like uh, the one of the economists, like crypto's downfall, 
um, are not, uh, you know, are setting us back uh, in terms of PR uh, uh, a few years back. So. Uh, we're still in that like downfall and, and ripple effect of uh, this like FTX fallout with uh, you know like headlines like the Genesis um, uh, exchange like filing for bankruptcy uh, along with um, news like you know like wallet being hacked etc uh, etc. Cetera, et cetera. So this is just not helping. Uh, but this is uh, where we are. Uh, and um, I, I will share the, I mean, you can uh, look at the uh, link with the, uh, after uh, the presentation, like there's, um, you know, like you, you have seen like many, many uh, types of prediction for 2023. I honestly only did these eight ones to laugh at them in six months and say, oh my God, like how wrong you were. Uh, but, uh, you know, this, um, um, this is something that like uh, we, um, you know, like, we don't know what, what can happen. I mean, this is, uh, 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 but, you know, kind of uh, uh, looking at it. That's kind of just an introduction uh, before we uh, go back uh, to uh, basics, but um, kind of wanted to pause here uh, to see if you had a, a comment or, or a question. All right, so don't get too like, you know, this is fine. Like this is like not the first crypto winter, not the first crisis. Um, like, the market will uh, go up and down uh, and that's uh, normal in any market. Uh, but, um, uh, but, you know, this is uh, something that like uh, we're building for the long term. This is kind of what I uh, want you uh, to, uh, to remember. Okay, so. Um, the crypto art market. So uh, terminology wise, I'm just gonna use like uh, crypto art uh, in terms of uh, uh, just ease of, uh, uh, of vocabulary. Like there's, um, you know, it's, it's hard to define something that is actually currently being created. Like if you go back 2018, it was like uh, blockchain art, like then it or rare art, uh, then uh, we had NFT art. Uh, now we are um, actually, Actually, with the FTX and all the crypto crisis, like even crypto art is having bad press. So now we're going back to uh, blockchain-based art, uh, digital art, just in general. Uh, but overall, it should just all be art, in my uh, humble uh, opinion. And what I want to do today uh, is uh, to give you a few, um, like an overview of, uh, of a few elements uh, that make uh, this uh, uh, market. And, uh, and oftentimes we uh, rush a little bit uh, to talk directly about platforms, uh, but uh, we <laughs> sometimes forget that platforms are actually blockchain specific. Um, there are very few um, platforms that are actually blockchain agnostic. I mean, we all want that to happen one day, but technically it's, it's actually very uh, hard uh, to achieve. Um, so looking at like the many blockchains, typology of the NFT platforms, uh, but also like uh, kind of looking at the traditional uh, art actors and, and by traditional, I mean the contemporary art actors uh, involved uh, in this market. Uh, but also like new uh, Web3 tools and services that like, uh, if I go back to my <laughs> predictions for 2023, uh, is, is really like uh, the 2023 to me is not the year of the DAO, but it's like the years that like service and tools uh, for artists, collectors, uh, and, 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 and all the actors of the market will actually uh, be uh, developed. Uh, so uh, also we need that to uh, get a better, um, more, um, sustainable uh, environment. So that's kind of what like the four points I'm I'm going to cover. Just keeping track of time. How how long do we have like um, uh, Boria? Is it like an hour and a half total? Hour and a half. Okay, uh, perfect. Uh, that's uh, that's totally fine. I don't have that many sites, so we we can then uh, really keep time for for discussion. All right, so I uh, just wanted to give you, um, again, like um, none of these slides are like exhaustive or like, uh, but just meant to give you um, uh, some, we, 
some structure uh, and framework on, on how to uh, kind of like uh, categorize uh, different uh, uh, things. And in this case, like I um, uh, wanted to um, just give you uh, an overview of the blockchains that are mostly used by art projects. And these two are currently uh, what I would call the Ethereum um, bubble, <laughs> uh, because in uh, the Ethereum like blockchain, you have actually Ethereum, uh, the core uh, chain, uh, which uh, is um, you know kind of like the main chain that has been used uh, for a while uh, by uh, NFT uh, projects. Uh, but then you also have like uh, more recently like layer two uh, blockchains. Uh, that are still uh, using uh, the core Ethereum blockchain, but that are um, kind of in the, um, you know, environment uh, of uh, Ethereum or like on the um, <laughs> like a stratosphere. I don't want to use like space uh, analogies, but um, but that are like uh, not interacting with the Ethereum main chain all the time, uh, allowing to save on fees and um, and before. Ethereum like uh, merge happened uh, was actually uh, more environmentally friendly. Um, for the longest time, so until like the merging that happened in September 2022, uh, if you were an artist uh, and cared uh, slightly about the environment, um, really Tezos uh, was uh, your only like um, like safe choice, right? Like because uh, Tezos like from the start was uh, an environmentally friendly. Uh, option. And uh, remember headlines like, um, you know, our Ethereum or like NFT artists are burning the planet. Well, that was for like pretty much every other uh, blockchain. Since the merge, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a little uh, better. Uh, and, uh, and, you know, it's always better in decentralized or not decentralized or any environment to have multiple options. Uh, and, uh, and, you know, you don't have to be tied to uh, one chain, right? Like it's like a lot of artists have like some um, uh, works and series on Tezos and some like other on, on, on Ethereum. But then there's like a million other blockchains, right? Like, I mean, from like even Bitcoin and Counterparty, like a uh, lot of like early projects um, that Jason will probably color, like, uh, cover, like Neely, uh, Neely Coins by Neely Learner was on Counterparty. Like there's uh, um, uh, NFT platforms on Bitcoin as well. Solana, uh, Flow, like Polkadot, Bitmark is the one used by uh, uh, Feral File. There's a million other. Just, um, but just keeping in mind that like, Blockchain is actually the first choice uh, uh, before thinking about a, a, a platform. Any question on the blockchains? All right. So uh, blockchains, I would say the like you know under layer, and then like um, ah sorry yeah. As I, I mean, I kind of covered all of that, but uh, but you might be wondering, okay, so how do I decide, right? Like now that, that both are so like you know environmentally friendly, uh, Ethereum is still co uh, a little bit more uh, expensive in terms of fees. Um, uh, there's definitely like uh, you know like uh, more volume on Ethereum, but the Tezos community, uh, like art community, is more uh, developed. Uh, Tezos being more centered on uh, art use cases. Um, there's a lot of things to take into account uh, but but this is like also like you know like uh, you have to select uh, I would say per uh, project like you know this is not like uh, a, a choice that has to tie you um, like for eternity and of course like if you develop a community on one blockchain like a lot of collectors are still like siloed um, like you know some collecting mostly on Ethereum uh, and some collecting like mostly on uh, on Tezos uh, some overlap uh, obviously but uh, but it is like something um, that uh, you know <laughs> choose your own adventure as I as I say. Okay, so so then the second layer that I wanted to uh, uh, kind of uh, mention is uh, uh, the marketplace level, and uh, uh, and again, this is not like a, a, a complete uh, exhaustive list of uh, of marketplaces. Uh, like I could not possibly. Uh, fit uh, like the one that are uh, you know popping up every day. I mean a little less now, but um, but this is 
to give you like uh, three buckets uh, and uh, demystify a little bit um, uh, kind of ideas around uh, marketplaces that uh, might um, that their marketing might uh, might give you. Um, so first uh, and foremost, like the uh, the first bucket is uh, what I call the permissionless uh, platforms. And these are the ones where uh, everybody, you, me, my grandma, my daughter, like anybody could uh, go uh, mint uh, uh, an NFT. And, um, you know, OpenSea being obviously like the uh, most, uh, you know, advertised or well-known one, uh, but Zora is oftentimes forgotten. And I, I do want to emphasize like how um, like Zora, again, I have no financial ties, I'm not paid by Zora, uh, but Zora actually um, has been uh, really used by many artists uh, in terms of uh, um, ease of use, uh, decentralization, and, uh, and tools uh, in, and to, uh, to mint uh, NFTs. Uh, so uh, do not uh, forget uh, Zora. And and then you have like the invitation uh, only platforms. And I make a point of saying invitation only and not curated. <laughs> because uh, oftentimes uh, people tell me like, oh, super rare or non-origin, they're curated platforms. No, invitation only uh, is not similar, uh, is not like a synonym for uh, curated. Like curated, like especially in the art market, is a very um, you know, like strict uh, sense uh, where um, they're like small shows like with, um, you know, like kind of like what Feral Fi is doing now with uh, a curator per show, like a small number of artists, uh, a theme uh, sometimes as well. And, and really like, um, you know, like there's a care idea behind curation um, that uh, invitation only platforms uh, cannot provide. Uh, and it's just not that they don't want to do it, but this is like a volume game, right? Like it's, a, it's their for profit uh, businesses, uh, they need to have uh, volume. And uh, because they need volume, they have a, a, a quite a large number of artists, which at the end of the day means that like they can't do much for you, right? Like, I mean, if we look at Super Rare and an Origin Maker's Place, they still have one uh, homepage, one Twitter account, and uh, <clears throat> and one uh, blog. Um, they're quite small teams behind, so uh, the number of artists, like, I let you, cal <laughs> I leave, I let the calculation to you, but the, the number, number of artists they can feature is very small. So just remember that invitation only, not curated. And then I'm even shying away <laughs> to like call my third bucket like uh, curated. Um, I, I call it like uh, specialized. Uh, and then these are like the uh, marketplaces or the platforms that uh, actually are specialized in one uh, genre. Uh, art blocks being the uh, most obvious one um, that is, um, you know, specialized in uh, generative art. Uh, bright moment. I'm not actually sure how we can call bright moments. Um, you know, they're also uh, sort of generative. I don't know if any of you have a, um, a genre to give me <laughs> for bright moments. Uh, you know, generative collectibles, pixel pixelated art collectibles. Um, um, <laughs> I'm open to two suggestions. This one, I'm, I'm not sure how to define. Uh, Quantum uh, is uh, also, um, you know, like uh, photography uh, uh, based. Uh, they, they, they still cover like uh, more than photography, but the uh, starting place was uh, to have a platform dedicated to, uh, to photography. Uh, Verse.work work is, is closer to uh, curated. Uh, they uh, cover, uh, they're more agnostic uh, in, in terms of, uh, of genres. Any questions, debates, things you disagree with on this slide? Ah, one thing that I want to mention is that um, there's a million like platforms like coming up every day, and I'm sure like uh, some will reach out to you and say like, oh, like we're launching this new marketplace, like uh, do you want to be like featured as an artist? Be very careful with that um, because um, uh, oftentimes. Um, these like new uh, marketplaces, and we've seen that like um, like for the past like four years, is that like the benefit uh, to the platform feature, like featuring an artist is higher uh, than what you're gonna uh, benefit from as an artist, and uh, and oftentimes 
you know, like it's sad to say, but like small platforms um, are uh, more prone to uh, disappear uh, faster. I mean, this is kind of the reality of the Web 2, like more, more traditional way that companies are financed is that like, um, you know, like up and see. Um, for now, like there's a good chance that they stay around uh, uh, for at least a little longer than smaller platforms because of the funding uh, and the backup uh, that they have. But you know, like there's always exceptions to uh, to the rule. But um, but be uh, be very careful. Um, artists also have had like really bad experiences with uh, bugs and and new platforms that were uh, not up to standard to what they were uh, expecting. Tezos. Um, so Tezos, uh, uh, similar, uh, I would say, similar, um, um, you know, framework. Uh, again, like they're uh, permissionless. Uh, that's um, pretty much the same, um, the same idea where everybody can uh, can come and uh, uh, and and create uh, works. Uh, and um, you know, we probably um, know uh, a few of these. Uh, I want to call attention to wearable. That is like the only one that is in both buckets, um, and uh, where you can actually select uh, to uh, mint uh, on uh, Tezos or on uh, Ethereum, and it's uh, uh, it's not um, you know it's not easy technically, and it's uh, it's still like hard to for Rarible to um, you know like kind of manage these two uh, communities at once under the Rarible brand. Uh, many people don't actually know that like you can uh, mint on both uh, blockchains on uh, on Rarible. So, uh, but just want to uh, mention uh, that. And if I skip the one in the middle, like uh, specialized like platforms uh, on Tezos, like same thing. Like we, uh, to me, it's 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 a little bit like the future. I mean, there's no NFTs, right? Like it's like we're talking about websites in general. Uh, so this like segmentation uh, of. Uh, types of NFTs uh, and uh, platforms, therefore, that are tied to only one type uh, is, uh, to me, like a, a, a more, um, you know, logical uh, future than like giant uh, marketplaces where you have everything. So for example, if, uh, uh, you know, I want to find uh, poetry on the blockchain, like I know that if I go to the Verseverse uh, site, uh, I will find uh, what I want. One off is one for music, FX hash is one for generative art. Uh, there might be many uh, others uh, I, I don't know about. And then in terms of like curation, like there's, um, I, I feel a little more confident uh, putting uh, curated uh, uh, for uh, because Tezos has like really um, you know focused their effort on uh, developing this art community uh, and uh, uh, Alter Hen is uh, is one uh, platform that was um, um, is run by um, a collective of artists uh, including Diane uh, Drubé and Patrick uh, Tresset uh, and uh, and you know Kadaf uh, actually their um, they got a grant, uh, like the Verseverse, to develop a Tezos-based uh, curated marketplace. Um, the CADAF one, I must say, is, uh, is offline uh, right now. I just uh, uh, saw that um, as the other day. Uh, Organic Material is another one that does a lot of like uh, solo shows. Uh, this is uh, a little bit like where you see like the, uh, the push of uh, the Tezos Foundation uh, towards uh, the art uh, communities. Um, any questions? Sorry, <laughs> like I'm feeling I'm like overwhelming you, like or or boring you. <laughs> All right. So so one thing that um, also I want to uh, uh, show you is that. Um, a lot of names on this slide, uh, but there's a logic to it. So bear with me one second. Uh, there. Uh, a lot of uh, online marketplaces, uh, like uh, which uh, started like you know like Quantum or Artblocks, uh, uh, actually have recently uh, like developed like uh, IRL and uh, physical uh, spaces to show their uh, exhibitions. Like Quantum has a space in LA. Um, there was one going to open in New York. I'm, I'm not sure where they are. Uh, there's Oshi Gallery in. Um, 
in Australia, uh, Bright Moment with their pop-up in many cities, uh, Art Blocks uh, with their Marfa uh, gallery, uh, et cetera, et cetera, like the NFT factory uh, as well. So, so there's this shift of like this like online uh, marketplaces, which are all like uh, um, you know kind of crypto native. Uh, that like really slowly are like um, you know feeling that like the weight of adoption is really also through uh, uh, shows uh, in real life and uh, and and physical uh, spaces, uh, which is very exciting. And on the other side of the of my little squiggle, uh, not a chromo uh, uh, chromy squiggle, squiggle uh, but on the other side uh, we have uh, more like brick and mortar uh, galleries. Uh, like if I, you know, I, I love that we're calling them traditional galleries, but contemporary art uh, galleries. Uh, actually, uh, with the advent of uh, more digital art and NFTs and everything that was happening uh, in the past years, have actually expanded uh, from physical spaces to uh, online uh, galleries. And uh, just to mention a few, expanded art is uh, um, you know, kind of like blockchain-based art uh, branch of Koenig uh, Gallery. Uh, Bit Art is uh, uh, NFT uh, platform for Bitform Gallery. Uh, you know, the mega galleries like Gagosian, Pace, like Nagel Draxler, all have developed like online uh, offering. Etc. Like Gazeli Art House, like created Gazelio, uh, uh, where you probably seen Anna Maria being uh, uh, Caballero being a resident uh, there, uh, Brendan Dawes, uh, etc. And so this is an interesting move. Uh, you know, kind of coming from both sides, like the online one and the physical uh, one. Uh, and they're kind of like now all mixing uh, each other, like meaning that like there's no clear difference now uh, that from uh, a crypto native like or an online native uh, 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 marketplace that now has a physical space or a physical uh, uh, business that has now like an online uh, space. And again, this is like some things I'd like to uh, pay attention when you see an online like marketplace, does it have a physical component like uh, with the parent company or the supporting um, um, you know, partner behind? Uh, it's Sometimes it's not easy to see, right? Like, I mean, Pace Verso is pretty obvious that it is like supported by Pace, but expanded art, if you don't know the background or don't know that Annika Meyer uh, was uh, at, the, at the head of uh, expanded art, used to work for Kanish Gallery, uh, it's hard to find. But it's important uh, when uh, you look at a, uh, at, a, at a platform or, you know, kind of like consider uh, the different actors uh, in the space. And also, it really asks a question of like business, new business models, right? Like it's like, um, you know, Friends, like, is there even a line now, like here, like, and uh, and that is like kind of an open question uh, to be seen. Uh, again, like this, um, you know, like most of these, like a year ago, did not even have um, um, a, a, a physical space. So uh, the question is uh, is quite uh, quite recent. So. Other, um, you know, so we mentioned, like I mentioned here, a few uh, galleries that have like started to be active in the Web3 space. Uh, but I wanted to also mention other uh, art uh, actors uh, that are uh, active uh, or getting uh, slowly uh, into uh, the Web3 space, uh, again, at very different level uh, of, um, you know, like kind of integration or uh, belief uh, even, uh, because, um, you know, we've all seen like auction houses like jump <laughs> into the uh, Web3 and NFT bandwagon uh, back in 2021 because um, they were like, ooh, this new thing that's going to make us money, yum, 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 yum. Uh, let's, uh, let's, uh, let's start selling uh, NFTs. And fine, right? Like, I mean, auction houses are like have sold uh, things that interest high net worth individuals like for uh, centuries, like not just art, like purses, like fashion items, like uh, watches, jewelry, etc. So why not NFTs? Um, some have like just had like one or two sales and then be like, okay, we try that, done, like going back to regular business. Um, Sotheby's and Christie's obviously 
are the leading uh, auction houses and so with bigger teams as well. So they've managed to develop um, actually teams uh, around uh, uh, NFTs, uh, but also platforms. Uh, but let's see how active they are, right? Like if you look at like, I don't know if you remember like this Sotheby's metaverse, and that is not a metaverse, it's just a website called metaverse. Like when was the last sale that happened there? I'm not actually sure. Uh, Christie's 3.0, uh, same thing. Let's see if they continue uh, in uh, their involvement uh, in the space. I mean, they're always good, um, you know, like kind of signals uh, and, and great for more mainstream adoption, but um, we you know, can't be fooled by the glamour or like the adoption, uh, I would say, uh, of uh, traditional art actors. And I think it's very similar to art fairs, uh, and if uh, some of you were at um, um, Art Basel in Miami, uh, yes, they had Tezos uh, as a um, technical sponsor, uh, but compared to Paris Plus uh, uh, earlier in, in 2022 or even the previous Art Basel in Miami 2021, um, the, booth of te the Tezos booth was like quite hard to find, right? C kind of an afterthought. Um, and uh, and still a technical uh, partner. So um, you know, Art Basel is like being careful. Uh, they launched this like uh, RQL, like uh, which is uh, not a public blockchain for artists uh, to mint their work, but a private blockchain uh, that is acting as for. Uh, that, that is act, doing two things uh, for physical work. So it's not uh, really focused on, on digital works uh, right now. Um, it's, it's really for, uh, and their first like kind of segment uh, that they are attracting are galleries and RQL is gonna uh, really facilitate uh, payments and certificate of authenticity uh, for uh, galleries on a private uh, blockchain. So. Uh, again, you know, this is like a very different type of engagement uh, uh, and, uh, uh, and, but overall I think the positive, what, what I think is positive in terms of like, um, like art fairs is to see smaller uh, fairs uh, get more booths dedicated to uh, digital art, uh, blockchain based or not actually like, but um, you know, like Untitled this year had a uh, bit form. Uh, they had uh, a project called Lonely Rocks, uh, which was actually presenting a decentralized uh, curation. Uh, I think we blew a little bit like people's mind when talking about that, you know, it's a lot advanced uh, for uh, the art fair goers, but, uh, but this is where the change should happen, right? Like the goal is not to have like, um, um, Art Basel is like a very established fair, like Freeze as well. So we're not going to see like half of uh, the exhibitors there like suddenly exhibit NFTs, right? It should start with smaller, uh, more independent art fairs and Nada, Scope, Untitled, and uh, the independent art fair, uh, like the affordable art fair, like all of these is like slowly uh, seeing more uh, exhibitors and, and booths uh, dedicated to digital art. And to me, this is what um, is going to take time, but is exciting uh, to see. Again, we went back a little bit to art uh, world pace in these like NFT art markets. Uh, you know, we're less like crypto space where everything goes super fast and, and uh, uh, but maybe it's, it's for the better good on the, in, in the long term. And museum, yeah. Hi, Fanny. Uh, I actually do have a question about kind of going back to your previous slide about this, this emergence of these new business models that mix physical and digital spaces. You know, what I'm also seeing with the rise of these is this emergence of physical, like the mix of physical and digital media formats where, you mm -hmm. know, digital assets are essentially tied to physical artifacts. So I guess yeah. my question is, do you think this is more informed by the, maybe the pull of the concept of collectibles in the larger NFT market? Or do you think it's more a movement to attract contemporary art collectors? Yeah, I, I would say the latter uh, because it's uh, it's something that like uh, you know for the longest time we had like 
very separate um, like types of artworks. Either it was like uh, digital only, or it was uh, physical. Uh, and uh, and and you know, in the recent years, uh, when the uh, kind of digital only collectors uh, collector crowd uh, was increasing with NFTs, uh, this is something that like was working to have like digital only uh, artworks. Now that like uh, we're at the point where we need a little bit more, um, you know, traditional collectors to join the space, like trying to get more mainstream adoption. This is where people go back to the idea of like object art and uh, and uh, um, you know like kind of like having what you said like these experiments uh, of artworks that are uh, kind of in both realm. And and this is where it's like um, and and I don't know if uh, if. Uh, if Alex covered that, like uh, in his like aesthetic or like genres, but it's uh, uh, it's something that um, you know is still at the ex experimentation phase, and it's like I'm I'm trying not to um, you know like categorize uh, things or or, or artworks. Um, so that's why I don't have an artwork like uh, focused. Uh, um, you know, kind of view like they wanted to focus on the ma market uh, players. Uh, but to your point, I think this is like where um, this is complicated because it's also like it's uh, we're we're trying out things, right? Like we're trying out to see how or like what will interest like more traditional collectors, like uh, for the you know kind of like crypto native collectors like some of them don't even want the physical piece like most of like a lot of the um exhibit that i've seen like some like actually refuse like, like don't send me anything like i don't want anything physical so it's like it's an interesting mix but it's actually it relates uh, a lot to uh, uh to this like tension between the two and this like new business model and it's really tied to like also new types of art uh, as you said and i really don't want to you know, like I really hope we're not gonna um, normalize the term physical. <laughs> I really hate it. Like to be honest, I, I get it wrong all the time as well. Like I was like physical, physical. Um, so hopefully we can, you know, like get to a point where we can categorize things a little uh, like more easily. But uh, but I think to answer your question, I think there's like right now there's just like there's no like NFT artist or Web3 artist. To me, there's only artists who use. NFTs or Web3 tools, or uh, you know, a, as part of like uh, like the um, the same way the you know some of you might use like paintbrush or words, and uh, you know, like kind of uh, uh, to uh, add to your palette of uh, of tools uh, in uh, in the space. I'm not sure I'm I love your question. No, absolutely, I, I really love that outlook. So thank you so much. Oh, no problem. And uh, and so yeah so so to go back I mean uh, to just finish on this kind of like actors uh, there's uh, uh, museums as well are like uh, you know kind of uh, uh, if you're interested in in what museums are doing uh, there's a program called WAC uh, uh, WAC which is Web3 for Arts and Culture uh, there's a weekly call that I co-host with Diane uh, Drube. Uh, from TZ Connect, uh, which is really talking about like how museums like interact with uh, Web3 uh, and, and blockchain. And this uh, yesterday we had uh, Tina uh, River Ryan from the Buffalo AKG uh, Art Museum uh, who commissioned uh, a whole uh, set of uh, uh, NFT uh, or blockchain based uh, artworks uh, from the peer to peer show that they had in, uh, uh, in December. Um, you know, and, and other, uh, LACMA is having an exhibition uh, coming up. Uh, the IC acquired a CryptoPunk uh, in December. Uh, back in the days, the Belvedere and the Hermitage uh, museums, like back in actually 2021, uh, second part of 2021, like kind of did their toes uh, as well, like uh, testing um, uh, what they could do uh, with NFTs. Um, you know, the British Museum launched this kind of digital souvenirs uh, with La Collection. So it's like, they're also experimenting and it's, um, I have to give it to them that like, you know, we always say, ah, oh, museums are so slow. But they've been part of the conversation since the beginning. So uh, this is quite uh, quite exciting. And, uh, you know, like, <laughs> again, art world pace, right? But we're like seeing more and more uh, news related to, um, you know, any like acquisition or Web3 experiments. So um, this is um, something to keep an eye on. 
Freddie, can I ask you to, to give us a link for um, the talks that you yes. host? Yeah, yeah, I will. Uh, I will do it. Like I, I'm gonna take a note, uh, like a grandma I am. Uh, and uh, uh, but yes, it's uh, it's walk dash lab dot x y z. But I w I will put it in the in the uh, in the Discord uh, after. All right. So so this is kind of just a summary. <laughs> it's a lot of text, uh, but it is a summary of like. Um, you know things to consider uh, when you're looking at uh, at actors or like marketplaces or uh, even like galleries that you might uh, be considering. Um, and and before I go through that, I, I will say that like you know if you're just starting, because I know some of you are just starting, there is absolutely no shame uh, at uh, starting on permissionless like platforms, right? Like if you take some artists like Kevin Abosh, who are like super established. To this day, doesn't give a shit to be like on like you know like one of this like smaller platform. Uh, he still like launches most of his most of his series on OpenSea. You know, Harm van den Dorpel, same thing. He does everything on Vora. He's not like you know trying to um, you know like get on uh, the like you know more elitist uh, platforms. And uh, uh, and at the end of the day. Uh, there's also this trend I, I do want to mention is that it should not be about the marketplaces, right? Like this is such a web two traditional way to look at it, right? Like you remember um, before we're looking at like Artnet and uh, and well Christie's, Sotheby's and and galleries, but uh, like the idea of the blockchain was to give the peer-to-peer -peer, uh, tools uh, to the artist uh, to uh, not have to use one of these marketplaces. Of course, it helps a little bit in terms of like uh, still like you know like marketing and and kind of being part of a of a community. But again, like this, there's so much that the marketplaces can do uh, for you. And uh, and before I go to that slide i think this is like one of the goal is really also uh for you to lose to you to you know kind of become independent and we always uh, uh you know like and you probably will have like a security focused uh uh class uh but this is like uh where with nfts if you and and anything web3 if you don't own your keys uh you don't uh you know pretty much own anything and this is kind of where starting with a uh, with a platform, of course, is like uh, you know, like uh, an easy way to start. But it's always this tension between ease of use and control. Uh, and uh, if you use a platform, even OpenSea, you're tied to their terms, right? It's a standard smart contract. Like if they decide tomorrow they don't want to do royalties, well, they don't anymore, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So slowly but surely, like I want you to keep in uh, in mind that like um, you know, like trying to even own your smart contracts, like uh, for more control, and uh, and the more you're developing uh, a, a collector's uh, base, like you know, try to not be tied to like one platform because. Um, you know, as we've seen, like platforms disappear, uh, and you, you, there's no such thing again as a, yes, a Web3 artist, but also a super rare artist, right? Like, sure, like this is still like has its aura, uh, but it should not be a definition. You should an artist should never define themselves by the platform uh, they're tied uh, in. And um, you know, a lot of artists have like uh, now created their smart contract with Manifold. Uh, Nifty Kit also like offers like some of these um, services. Uh, Zora as well like offer uh, more uh, different terms. Um, again, but again, Manifold is not like everybody's like, wow, I love Manifold. Yes, it's great, right? Like Manifold, but you should not just have like one uh, option uh, to uh, you know create your smart contract. And it's free, but maybe tomorrow it's not going to be free. Uh, this is something that, like, really be careful uh, about, like, um, like the tools uh, that that you're using. And then, so that's kind of a checklist. Uh, next time you consider uh, a, a, a platform, a gallery, a marketplace, like anything. Uh, look at these different things. Like, look at the curation of the platform. How many artists they have? Like, how many shows a month or a day they have? Like, uh, you know, like, um, you know, kind of like all this like around the curation of the platform that you should pay attention to. 
um, terms and conditions. It is not easy. I mean, we're like all like, oh, the blockchain is so transparent, but it's like so hard to find the terms and conditions, even on like uh, the smart contract, like um, details, uh, the, the, the royalties, like the fees for the platform. They do not make it easy for you to find this. Also, do they have like a secondary sales or like do the resales happen on open sea? Like, how does that work? Like, you do not want to be surprised when the collector, um, you know, contacts you six months down the line and say like, oh wait, like I can't actually resell that. Like, this is um, something that like you have to think uh, ahead. Other, you know, technical details like the storage of the file, like where or how how is it uh, stored? Uh, in case like the platform disappears, like this is a whole club NFT. Like you know, ask Daniel if you need more uh, more details because this is like uh, where uh, you don't want your um, you know NFTs to have a broken link uh, to the asset. Uh, payment options and then ownership of the company uh, and and I could that list could go on for for a long time uh, but this is something that like also trust your gut you know like I could just like scratch that slide and say like if it does feel right at that moment like it's probably a good idea if it doesn't uh, you should probably stay away from it but if you want a more uh, thorough checklist than uh, trusting your guts um, this is uh, a good one to uh, uh, to follow. Um, and then I'm going to uh, skip because we're, we're already uh, a little bit, but um, you know, you're probably also uh, looking at like um, uh, Metaverse and Boria is an expert uh, on Metaverse, so I will leave that to her. Uh, but this is like, you know, there's already a few like uh, generations of uh, cultural Metaverses. Uh, the first ones were where you had to purchase a piece of land, a real estate to actually build a space on it. Uh, new models are coming up uh, now, like where you don't have to purchase a piece of land. You can have like a, uh, you know, free um, kind of model or a free like 3D gallery, or you can like actually pay for um, uh, building, or you can build or pay for like uh, uh, premium uh, spaces. Uh, Krista Kim is launching a new uh, uh, a new experiment. Like um, I don't have much details, but this is quite uh, uh, exciting. It's the Orb uh, Metaverse. Uh, so it's changing all the time. This is even more like uh, experimental uh, than um, anything else in in Web three. And the services that I was mentioning, like this, is something that uh, I really do think we're going to see more. Uh, but this is the layer of the market uh, that uh, you know, not just sale and uh, and marketplaces that like to become sustainable uh, as an ecosystem. Like we need to see more of. Uh, we need to see more easy to use uh, tools. Um, and you know, like Club NFT for security is uh, really aiming for that. Uh, hardware wallets, like you know, um, more like legal and. Uh, uh, technical and and tax uh, tools, um, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Like display solutions. Like this is uh, all. Um, if you look really in details, uh, they're very at their infancy. Uh, I would say. Like this is uh, Trust Flagger is not even launched yet, uh, and it's like kind of crazy that we don't have another tool to do that. Uh, and there's probably some that I, I really don't know about, but this is uh, um, all of these, like, uh, this is kind of, I hope, going to be like 2023 uh, focused to, um, uh, to improve uh, the services that are out there. And and something that I do want to uh, like finish with is that like um, the the goal is uh, is really you know we talk about like traditional actors uh, like uh, joining the space and it's it's great I mean it gives like more mainstream uh, adoptions like more uh, exposure also to uh, audiences but uh, but to me and I, and I you know like and you tell me if you if you disagree but to me the goal has never been to put the art market and just reproduce it on the blockchain unfortunately if you look at like art market actors like Sotheby's Christie's um, and in you know like museums are a little different or art fairs even they're very established right like the the way uh, things work right now in the you know like contemporary art space work for them, right? Like the high uh, barrier to entry, the high fees they charge to artists, like et cetera, et cetera. They have no incentive to change that. That 
is the responsibility like changing the paradigm paradigm and moving the needle forward to make the web3 art market better than the contemporary art market currently is on us right like i mean and vertical crypto art is playing uh, a big role in that uh, but also like uh, other uh, companies are building uh, different economic models uh, for creatives. Um, and we're talking about that with Borea uh, at one point. Like, it's, uh, it's also crazy that, like, in terms of economic models, that we're still, uh, you know, artist success is still only linked to uh, fame and how many works or for how much they sell uh, their work. Um, there could be many other things, right? I mean, then we, should, we would need an entire hour, but this is like uh, Dada.art uh, like, is actually looking at new, uh, new economic models uh, that would, uh, you know, kind of change that and uh, refraction DAO uh, in, in some aspect uh, as well. Uh, Gitcoin, I mean, these are all like models that like if you, uh, curation is, is totally like a, a field of research uh, that uh, we should really uh, push forward and, and it's, it's our responsibility to do that because traditional actors are not going to push it. Don't give a shit. <laughs> so pardon my French. <laughs> And then I mentioned maybe a rebranding <laughs> might be uh, might be helpful to uh, move forward uh, beyond the PR crisis. Like you know, NFTs was definitely the term not to be said at Art Basel. Now crypto art is even like um, you know like uh, really uh, targeted after the crypto downfall with FTX. Like and maybe we just uh, go back with blockchain based art or you know digital art. Like I mean any. Um, any suggestion here is, uh, is, is welcome. And then that's my, sorry, it's my new career making art memes. Uh, this is like where, you know, this is going to be slow. Like this is not going to be like, you know, we're going to need like to get more collect collectors in. We're going to need to get more actors, more services, as I said. But in the long term, we're building for, uh, you know, to win the race, but it's a very long race. So, you know, like the rabbit, I mean, I could replace PFPs by NFTs here. Uh, this, you know, this is not like rushing in and, you know, things might, will take time. So kind of uh, concluding thoughts, but I already covered it, so I'm going to go really fast so we can have uh, um, uh, time for questions. Um, there's a lot of many innovative like tools and platforms that are being uh, built right now, and <clears throat> it's confusing because it's happening right now. Uh, but a lot of it is not that innovative or different, right? Like this is like where we need to stop like the like you know like Twitter hype and like everything is like wow so great and so beautiful and and generative art and a little bit like that right now. Like to me, it's uh, uh, you know not all uh, like platforms, tools, or art is na like, you know, kind of born equal. Like some, uh, there's a lot of hype right now. And, uh, and so uh, a, a lot will not, you know, take the, the I mean, sustain the test of, uh, of time in my opinion, but that's why you need to do your own research and really uh, understand uh, what you're using and, and, and how you're using it. And again, I think it's uh, it's always easier to reproduce uh, something that exists uh, than build something new. Uh, but this is uh, really uh, on uh, us to uh, you know make sure that like we uh, we build uh, better uh, than than what currently uh, exists. And and on this note, I will uh, end that presentation. Thank you so much for the presentation. It was really awesome. And having, t having seen it, um, having seen the previous versions of it, I really appreciate the fact that you, that, that you updated it because things, as you mentioned several times, uh, are changing so fast that as soon as you think that, that you've got it, you already don't. So um, any, I'm opening the floor for questions and cool. also and also, just so you know, Fanny, there is the chat on the right side where people might be dropping questions if they can't uh, join in. You, you need to click on cool. the little button on the top 
right yeah yeah, yeah. sorry yeah and awesome. i could not see it uh, while sharing my screen but um but definitely will uh, uh will and then uh, i'm gonna drop right now this is like the work lab dot xyz is this like work weekly uh conversation it's every wednesday at uh, 12 p.m uh, and we don't publish recordings, but we publish articles uh, uh, about the discussion afterwards. So, um, so this is like you know useful even if you missed uh, uh, some uh, previous ones. Like uh, this is uh, I'll share the direct link to the summaries. Um, it's a it's a, it's a nice format. All right. I have a question, if that's okay. Hi, Fanny. It's Danielle. Hi. How are, How are you? you? Um, so one question I have, I'm wondering what you're seeing in your, um, you know, consulting practice, working with collectors, um, especially um, folks maybe coming over for the, from the traditional art world. Um, there's such an imbalance in this crypto web three collector space of um, men versus women collectors. And I'm wondering if you see that improving at all um, and what you think it would take to improve that. I think a lot of it originates from the fact that like, so many collectors in this space come from the crypto or collectibles world, which is more male dominated, right? So as maybe, you know, people are coming from the traditional gallery and museum space where there are plenty of female collectors, maybe it'll start to even itself out. But yeah, just, just wondering about your thoughts on that. Yeah, I mean, and, uh, and it's not helping that like actually from both sides, right, like uh, just traditional art collectors or crypto native like uh, collectors like is, is are both like a, a very male dominated um, uh, space. I mean, both of both of them. So um, I think this, uh, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's something that will I don't have a solution, I, I will say, like, I think this is like where uh, we we need to, you know, push initiatives like forward, like Unicorn DAO and, uh, uh, and, 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 you know, getting more uh, female collectors in. And to me, uh, the, the way to do that is, uh, is really to uh, also focus on uh, highlighting uh, female uh, artists. Uh, because there's, uh, um, you know, like sadly, like, you know, uh, white uh, male collectors, like, identify uh, more with white male artists. I mean, this is, uh, um, <laughs> I mean, I'm generalizing, but, uh, but still this is, like, um, you know, where um, work by uh, female artists might actually um, uh, be more attractive to, uh, to, to female collectors. So, uh, so again, I think this is not an easy task. Uh, it's also a fine line to walk where uh, you don't want to just like have like female uh, art uh, DAOs and, and female art initiatives, but, uh, but, but still, I think this is like, uh, you know, very not normalized yet. And, uh, and so, so need to, uh, to push forward. But I think to this point, like there's uh, uh, going back to, uh, to my point on uh, on how salary like the the market right now is uh, uh, it, it's not an easy uh, uh, market to be in uh, because this is where uh, you know a lot of crypto native collectors are saturated right they've uh, collected uh, a lot of works already uh, a lot actually have like uh, decreased or paused uh, their collecting effort uh, in uh, in you know this year and. Uh, and on the you know like more traditional uh, art side or like co like contemporary art collectors, I mean if you go to um, you know Art Basel Miami like Freeze like there's so much money, so many contemporary art collectors, but uh, many like most of them haven't uh, yet uh, diversified their collection to uh, digital art, uh, and uh, you know there's um, recession coming. I mean this is like what the like contemporary art market uh, like is expecting for 2023 uh, like it might actually be a great opportunity to um, uh, you know for them to diversify their options if things in the more traditional contemporary art market is too expensive or uh, or that like you know doesn't sell uh, uh, at uh, so high prices maybe that will be an uh, uh, an opening window but it is going to be uh, kind of a, a long-term process uh, to uh, get them in. <laughs> Thanks. And your presentation was so great. Thank you so much. No, thank you. And um, I wanted to ask you, like, uh, yeah, uh, hidden uh, forces. You had a you had a question uh, on. Uh, 
uh, kind of seeking or not like traditional actors. Um, I mean, this is something that like, it's a personal choice, right? Like um, uh, artists by artists, like some really um, you know swear by like uh, new Web3 tools and, and shy away from uh, these alliances. Uh, some artists just got tired of doing it all themselves uh, and uh, uh, and really like started to uh, seek out like even gallery representation. This is where I'm kind of in the, you know, I understand uh, that like this is like we, uh, you know, like there's still this like need of approval uh, like from the traditional art world, uh, which, you know, oftentimes uh, gallery representation helps. Uh, I think this is also not something that's easily done. I think this is where, um, you know, like where a lot of crypto artists really want to be uh, considered as an artist, not just a crypto artist or a crypto like or a tech like, you know, genius. Um, and uh, and this is where like, um, you know, working on on having a, a bit more like traditional um, um, artist profile, like an artist website, like kind of like talking, you know, even doing press releases. I mean, how boring, right? I know, uh, but uh, but really trying to uh, get more into these codes. If that's something you're looking for, is gonna help. My wish is that like we come up with a better, you know, solution and kind of more hybrid form. Uh, but uh, so far, um, I don't think we've had uh, uh, we've had you know much success. And as you said, like you know, wasn't super receptive uh, at all. Uh, however, this is changing. I must say that like um, you know, more and more uh, galleries, for example, are looking to uh, expand their rosters uh, of uh, of artists. But again, <coughs> this is still quite new and uh, uh, and and you know, um, not easy. Uh, you mentioned that like manifold is is not the only option. Uh, no, it, it's definitely not. I'm I'm just gonna say at one point like uh, people were a little too enthusiastic about having this like one uh, single option, like one option uh, that is free, that is amazing. I mean, this is where manifold is currently free, but it's also like um, you know supported or like backed by Anderson Horowitz uh, VC, uh, and uh, and that like you know like tomorrow it might. Um, they might decide to change their business model, and uh, so always looking into the fine line. My point was that, like, you know, if something is too good to be true, it probably is. Um, anything else? Sorry, I'm like going back to the to the chat. Uh, if uh, um, if I don't. Uh, But if anybody else has a has a question. <laughs> I think I covered you, everything in you the chat. Mentioned, you mentioned something about uh, collectors earlier. Collectors not wanting the physical um, the physical artwork when they collect the token for it. Actually I think we had such a conversation in our Sunday lounge with Christian and Danielle. And Christian mentioned that he has also um, seen such a tendency. Would you like to share a little bit more on that and uh, what does it mean for the shaping of the artworks that we're going to mint? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think this is, um, um, it's, it's again going back to like the experimentation and like understanding, <laughs> let, me, let me put my marketing hat. It's like, it's understanding your audience. It sounds terrible, but uh, but this is still the case where it's like uh, you know if uh, if you know like this is like you know if it is a show that you do at a at a gallery, well you know there's a chance that like you will need like a physical or like there's a, a better use for a physical object. If it's a online only uh, sale, or if you know that the collecting ba collectors base like uh, that are gonna. Uh, look at the work is mostly like uh, digital only collectors, then probably not worth like attaching a, a physical work. Uh, you also might have the option to, uh, well, make it optional, uh, no pun intended, uh, make the physical work uh, optional, right? Like this is where uh, as a collector, I've really um, enjoyed like um, collecting, um, you know, like tokens. 
and understanding that the digital work is the main uh, like work, uh, but then receiving like or paying extra even for a print. Uh, attached a physical print attached to the digital token. Like this is um, where it's not easy to do. You know, like Vertical Crypto Art like had like uh, a, a print store uh, with works by Zankan or even Ato that were actually not linked to a token. That were just prints. Uh, and so it's it's. Uh, it's a mechanism that, like, actually uh, ordering a print, like, attached to an NFT is still not, um, you know, quite, uh, um, like, easy to implement on most platforms uh, or quite uh, smooth uh, in terms of, uh, of uh, workflow, uh, but, but is, a, is an option. I don't know, Christian, if you, uh, if you had other, other thoughts about that uh, or, um, or if, you know, other ideas were discussed. I'll chime in one quick thing on the physicals note. I don't know if any of you have ever, well, actually, I know some of you have published on FX Ash because I've collected from you. Um, uh, tender art, which is like a layer to, I don't know how you describe it, uh, plat curated platform uh, that had started out focusing on FX Ash but has branch out further, they have a printing service that's really, really high quality. And if it, as long as an artist enables their project for printing, you can print um, right through the Tender website. So if any of you um, release works on FX Hash and you enable that, then collectors can use that and it's easy and, and the prints look beautiful. So just heads up on that. Yeah, there's a few others. There's actually also one that is like solidnft.com. I don't know if you know this one. Um, this is where, where you can actually uh, print uh, your NFT. Uh, and, uh, and I think it's still on, uh, it's metallic, uh, metal print. Uh, so, uh, so these are like, um, you know, quite specific, uh, I would say. Like it doesn't work for like, it's not like museum quality, like, you know, and quality paper. Uh, but this is something that, um, you know, is uh, uh, hopefully going to get developed more and integrated more. So you say, like, Daniel, if, uh, if, you, uh, uh, if you, you know, meant on one platform, that should be an option, like, uh, to, uh, to have that. Because uh, if you mean by yourself, and uh, this is something that we've, uh, We've discussed with Leila uh, uh, 360, who was part of the later, like the last uh, uh, cohort. Like, if you do it yourself, this is still quite manual uh, to do. You know, if like you mint an object or uh, or or you know, like on a um, more traditional platform uh, that doesn't integrate tender art, for example, like this is uh, still quite uh, um, messy to ask people for their like address and and so on and so forth. Things that you don't get when you. Uh, sell the, the digital token uh, only. They should really extend tender prints, not just for generative art. Yeah, I, you know, I, I think that Adam is th talking about possibly doing that because, um, you know, now uh, they are starting to have like icons that aren't just on FX hash, that aren't just on Tezos, like they're integrating Ethereum. And I think um, I've been talking to him a little bit. He might start in like incorporating some AI work. So d stay tuned, guys. <laughs> No, and it's, I mean, it's, it's smart to start with generative art because, I mean, you know, like my, my comment on the, on the market, I mean, there's, there's still like generative art is, is quite resisting uh, this like downward trend uh, and, uh, and really uh, uh, like still has like a core collecting base. Um, I'm way less bullish than most people on generative art, and I will tell you why. It's not because I don't like it, uh, but it's uh, because I think right now uh, the market is saturated with generative art offer. And it's quite natural, right? Like people, like artists have seen like generative art like series like uh, sell for very high prices. Uh, collecting base have been like developed and, and quite well by you know art blocks, FX hash, like people who keep spending money. Uh, so this is something absolutely to consider. You know, like this is not I'm not putting the blame on the artist, but uh, but this is also like if you think of like how much there is right now out there um, and how many artists they like, uh, do do generative art. 
um, it, and, and it's not all great, right? Like I think this is where um, like collectors right now are like, it's very hyped co to also collect uh, generative art, but in the generative art collectors, um, there are not that many, I mean, I don't have a percentage, but, uh, but there are a lot of people who don't even, you don't look at the quality of the code uh, behind, right? And the quality of the code for generative art is quite essential. And to sustain the test of time again, uh, I think this is where a lot is gonna go like, you know, like flatline, uh, like um, versus like some um, that are like truly innovative projects, truly uh, great uh, coding uh, experiments that uh, are gonna like you know still you know like uh, work long term. But uh, but there's a like just to be careful. There's a lot of hype and 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 saturation of the uh, offer on uh, on generative art. I get so many like people who say, well, that's not true, and like so I. Agree to disagree. <laughs> you the um, uh, the link to the uh, to the slides, uh, so you have it. And uh, uh, maybe Boya, should I put it not in the chat? Maybe I should put it in the in the fifth uh, um, cohort uh, channel. Yeah, that also could work. I'm actually All going right. to extract the links that were shared. Usually, I share them um, again in the um, in the YouTube video. But everyone, if you don't see them in the YouTube video description when I upload the recording, you can always go back to this chat on the right side. You don't need to access the the room. You just need to click on the little chat button next to the name of the chat, and you'll be able to see it. And thank you, Lucien, for uh, for noticing the. Um, I had the um, I had foundation in the wrong bucket uh, because uh, yes, it's uh, it's not uh, permission. Uh, it's permissionless now. Um, so thank you for that. It's always something. <laughs> Inched. Maybe, I, I mean, I have a question for you. Like, it's like, what, um, uh, what's, your, what's your view on the, on the market? Like for those who have like, uh, maybe already, uh, you know, been in the space for, for some time, it's like, what, are you optimistic? Are you, you know, prepared for the long crypto winter or uh, love to uh, take the temperature of the room? I'm generally very bullish about uh, the future of uh, of uh, the market. It would seem to me that uh, we're all of us uh, pretty early and uh, have a great opportunity to uh, uh, to uh, build uh, for the long term. I, it would seem to me that you could be easily pessimistic about the short term. It would seem to me that uh, if you were actually here for a long time, uh, you have a lot to look forward to. Great to hear. I think I remember Jason Bailey saying something like um, that the fact that now that 2021, the big craze and the bullish runs are, are over, we're actually going to be seeing a lot more quality of uh, collectors and um, also markets because people are not just chasing the, the dough, <laughs> so to speak. <laughs> Yeah, and Jason has a has a great slide. Uh, if uh, uh, if he doesn't have it, like go back to one of the earlier uh, presentation on the history of crypto art. But uh, it's uh, it's very true that like during hype market where things are selling left and right, well, you know, it's great for the short term like revenues that you might make, but but things are not exciting. And and one example is like what is exciting in like a million different PFP projects that like all have even like the same number of works. Like why are they all like 10,000? You know, even that is not like innovative. And so innovative projects and uh, tools and, and just innovation in general uh, comes uh, in uh, slower times. And that's, you know, the say like time to build uh, like, and, uh, uh, and you know, like this is kind of what it, uh, uh, it really uh, stands for. I mean, this is, 
stuff as well. Like I, I'm always cautious about not to be too uh, bullish, you know, like when uh, people say things like, oh, like, great, like, you know, nobody is buying anymore, like time to innovate or time to talk about the art, like being mindful is that like, this is also a tough situation, right? Like a lot of artists actually uh, quit their job or like, you know, like try to make a living of their art, like uh, during the, uh, the bull market and, and now are kind of um, suffering the consequences. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, like this is, uh, um, I'm very optimistic uh, as well. I really, really hope that like we can, uh, you know, it's hard for innovation to get funded as well. And uh, we all like uh, many, I mean, many people like really uh, got super mad at known origin when they got acquired by uh, by eBay by saying, oh, I'm not an eBay artist. Like it's like it's it's, it's betrayed us and everything. But uh, we should not be mad at David and the non origin team. Like this is like where uh, we should be mad at the fact that like the only option for non origin to uh, sustain their activity was to get sold uh, and get acquired by uh, a company like a Web2 company like like eBay. Um, they could not, uh, you know, continue their operations, and they would have shut down. And and some people might have preferred that actually, that like um, the acquisition to eBay. But uh, but this is something that, um, you know, finding ways to uh, sustain uh, new product, new companies, you know, like Club NFT and vertical crypto art, and uh, uh, and, uh, and and new business like JPEG dot space, like it is not easy. Uh, because like the traditional ways uh, for companies like to get funded and VC money, uh, if you don't fit in a in a box uh, that the VCs can justify uh, to uh, their own board and investors, you will not get their money. And uh, and and this is where like things have to change as well. And like we have to look at like alternative ways. And I know this is as artists, this is not your problem. But just want to uh, give you this uh, perspective as well as that like um, like the way that like innovation is funded is fucked up at the moment. And uh, and you know that that um, hopefully <laughs> we can um, help change. All right. Well, if uh, if that's uh, that's all, maybe uh, maybe we can uh, close down uh, the uh, the space. But uh, I'll, uh, I'm not very good at Discord, but I will make an effort to go back to the fifth court uh, channel to uh, uh, to keep an eye out. Uh, but uh, um, you know, I'm better at like Twitter uh, DMs uh, if uh, <laughs> if that's uh, an option. But you know, like I I'm not cool enough to have a an acronym, so uh, there's also Telegram or Twitter. It's F Lakubai. Uh, so if you need to find me, you, uh, you know where to find me. Thank you 